What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about seven traits that you should avoid in a co-founder. If you guys are new to the channel and you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, or startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me stay motivated to keep putting this content out for you guys. All right, guys, so the first trait that I think you should look to avoid in a co-founder is people who have ideas but no action plan. And I say that because you'll find that a lot of people really like to offer their opinions on things but aren't really dedicated to put the work in to accomplish their own ideas, essentially. And you'll find that that's why a lot of these people are looking for co-founders and partners because they're looking for somebody to kind of do things and they'll kind of just oversee things or make suggestions or whatever the, the path of least resistance is. It's like they do the least amount of work to really see the idea through. So they can delegate things to other people, they're willing to pay for things um, to other people, but they just themselves don't want to actually do the work. So that's one thing that I would definitely say look out for because it ends up a lot of times putting more work on you and it's not really a partnership because in that case, if somebody's always making suggestions or they have ideas and things like that, but they're not actually willing to do the hard part, or the hard stuff, then it, I mean, it's great they have great ideas, but ultimately if it's not a 50-50 a contribution, then it's not really a partnership. The second trait I think you should look out for is people whose focus or goals change a lot. You'll find that a lot of people have really good ideas that they're passionate about for like a few weeks, maybe a month. And if they're, you know, really dedicated, they might be onto something for maybe like two to three months, you know, at the most. But for the most part, they don't they don't stay on their own ideas or passion projects or businesses or anything very long. In the beginning, this huge burst of passion, a bunch of energy, they might go do, 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 do a bunch of stuff. But as soon as they get rejected or it's not making money or it's not doing as well as they thought, then they come up with an entirely new plan and scrap the original one. People who display this character trait, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because everything's about balance. So you don't want to be so rigid in your business model, your plans for your startup and your business that you never want to change your goals. You never want to change your focus. But at the same time, you don't want people on your team who are going to always kind of be like swaying on opposite ends of the spectrum all the time and kind of just always changing their mind and always kind of suggesting that things go a different direction or that this isn't working so let's switch or let's do this or let's do that or they're doing this over over there so why don't we try that those types of things you really have to be able to filter out what is important and what's not so that you don't just start getting distracted and wasting a bunch of time overextending yourself and trying a bunch of different things that you have no idea if it's validated if it's true if it'll work or anything but you're listening to somebody who just always wants to change the goal until something works. So like I said, it's all about balance. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing if somebody has that trait, but like I said, just make sure that they have a balance with it and it's not you know extreme where they're always changing their mind drastically. The third thing I think is really, really important and it's people who have bad communication skills. And I think that was pretty self-explanatory. I won't even go into it a ton, but obviously like you want people who you know are going to communicate whether things are good, whether things are bad. You don't want somebody who's gonna always communicate as long as things are going their way or the business's way or the things are going good. You wanna know when things are going bad as well. If something happens with a client and they just don't like being the messenger of bad news and they never tell you, then who knows how that could impact your business, your sales or anything going forward because they didn't let you know something up front. So again, that's just an example, but you want people who are gonna be responsive, who are gonna communicate whether good, bad, through disagreements, um, which will naturally happen. So you wanna be able to have somebody who has enough communication skills to where they're not getting super emotional and screaming and yelling and cursing and all this other stuff. Like you definitely want somebody who can be objective, level-headed, and just convey the facts about whatever a given situation is. The fourth thing is people who are inconsistent or not reliable. This is one of the ones I have the most trouble with. This is one of the ones that I think is, is really a big one because it happens a lot and it sucks because you can have people who have all the right skills and traits that you think you need in a co-founder and a partner, but unreliability or inconsistency could be the deal breaker. You know, regardless of if they have all those other traits and skills or not, if they're unreliable and they're inconsistent, you never know what you're gonna get from them. You never know 
what type of mood they'll be in on one day, if they're gonna be in the mood to work hard and work extra hours and put more time in and go the extra mile, or you don't know if they're gonna go out and party and you won't hear from them for a week. But the point is that you just don't know what you're gonna get from this person on any given day. And you really, really don't want that because when it comes time to dealing with customers or you know the brand of the business and things like that, having meetings and partnerships and all this other type of stuff, you don't want somebody who's unpredictable to just come in and possibly ruin something big for the business because they can't put their own you know, emotions or uh, whatever it is that, that makes people be this way, um, they can't put that aside for a bigger purpose or a bigger cause because it's how they are. So again, I just think that's a trait you should really look out for up front because like I said, it's not that it's inherently bad because some people just are that way. But I just think that it's, it's something that if it's possible to avoid, I definitely think that you should try to avoid people that display that personality trait. Number five is kind of sneaky. You might have to really get to know someone before you can really tell not if they have this trait, but it's being indecisive. This definitely doesn't mean that they don't have a role in the business and they can never do anything for the business, but I just think that it should exclude them from being a co-founder or a partner because that's what they do. That's what co-founders and founders do. You have to make decisions and a lot of the times they're hard ones. They're hard decisions that don't have a right or wrong answer they don't have a definitive positive or negative outcome that you can predict. You don't really know until you make a decision and do something and watch it play out how that's gonna impact the business, good or bad. So if someone can't really do that and they always need approval or a second opinion or another suggestion to be able to make decisions on their own, then it's not gonna be very helpful because again, that is why they're considered a co-founder or a partner. They should be able to make quality decisions based on what they know about the business, what they know about the market, what they know about the product. They should be able to make their own decisions based on that. Like I said, that one's gonna be a little harder to pin down and identify, but once you start seeing the, the pattern recognition that somebody is really indecisive, then again, it doesn't disqualify them from working in the business. I just think that it doesn't make them a good fit for a co-founder or a partner role. Number six is a big one, is people who over-promise. So while you might have some people who, you know, are unpredictable, some days they show up and produce a lot, and some days they show up and do nothing, or they can't be found, they're bad communicators or whatever, right? So you have this range, but sometimes you have people who over-promise everything, I can do this, I can do that, that's easy. I know people that do that. I know people that do this. I know investors, I know this. Everything, they know everything. Everything's easy or it can be done like this or they know a plan, they've done this before. They've done... Those people, over promisers, are a huge one that you should look out for. In my opinion, those types of people are usually overcompensating for something that they don't actually have. You know, I would just be very skeptical. It doesn't mean that they're not telling you the truth, but I would definitely vet them a lot and make sure that what they're saying is true because a lot of times people try to do that to have some false sense of, you know, importance or to get you to kind of buy into them and believe in them and what they have. So if you believe that they can help you, then, you know, you might treat them differently or treat them a certain type of way. And it might sound weird, it might sound crazy, but people do a lot of things to flatter their ego. So don't be surprised when people who come out and just start promising all these different things end up being people who have the least amount of pull, the least amount of connections, the least amount of skills. The last one is the big, the biggest one. I think that it's probably the most obvious one too. Don't look for co-founders that do not have previous business experience. And that doesn't mean they have to have started their own business and hired a bunch of employees and successfully sold the company already. But what it does mean is that they should have some type of idea or understanding about what a formal business looks like, how it runs, and where the roles fall within the structure. They should understand that there is definitely legal contracts and legal obligations involved, and they should be willing to sign some paperwork, and they should be familiar with that. Um, if your friends or anybody who you're trying to go into business with are afraid of doing that, then that's a big sign right there. That they're probably not ready for that co-founder position or that co-founder relationship in a business. So make sure they understand the legal ramifications of going into a business and 
understand the entities of the business and what type of business it is and what their role is and where they fall in the business organization and all those things and understand like equity splits and what they're going to get out of the deal and what you're going to keep in terms of you know being a founder being a co-founder what you guys are going to have what you're going to split how you're going to split it all those things you know they should at least be savvy to that stuff they should at least you know be learning about it or be open to learning about it if they don't already know about it this is something that they should be interested in like in terms of starting a business like if you're going to somebody and you're telling them about helping you with a business and they don't seem like they care about learning a business and they've never had one before they've never had a side hustle they've never even done their own freelance stuff where they're like managing their own business in terms of dealing with a client exchanging the money giving out receipts taxes if they've never done any of those things before it's out you really 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 should not do business with that person in terms of looking at them as a potential partner or co-founder in your business because it's just gonna equate to more work for you and more risk on their part by you know not knowing what they don't know so those are my seven traits to avoid in a co-founder or a partner guys i really hope that this is helpful uh let me know down in the comment section if it is if i'm missing things or you guys have had some personal experiences let me know down below i'm actually always curious to hear about that because i mean as entrepreneurs i think that hearing other people's like pitfalls and you know disappointment stories it can help other people and give people perspective so you know let me know down below if you guys have experienced some of these seven traits or if you you know experienced some other traits that should have been on this list uh let me know smash that like button too if this was helpful guys and if you're brand new to coding or you're thinking about going to a coding boot camp Make sure you guys check out the description box down below where I'm giving out my free intro to Coding Bootcamp course. It's got everything in it that I wish I would have known before I went to Coding Bootcamp and all it costs is your email address. Lastly, if you guys are looking to link up with other people who are trying to learn how to code or are career transitioning into software development, make sure you also check out the description box for my free private Facebook group where I give away all the resources that I don't put in the description box down below. So that's also completely free to join guys. Again, this is Darian with Darian the Dev and I'll see you guys in the next video, all right?